March 29th and uh, to start with now that we have a form we'll be going through the uh, park and rec budget to start with. Okay, if you'd like to just jump in on anything you'd like to talk about. Okay, so really the only difference between the um, um, requested and uh, the approved was the um, additional funding for the seasonal work. Okay. Um, you want to talk about ratios and like? Uh, sure. So when Park and Rec runs a program, uh, we have to hit a ratio of one staff member to ten children. And uh, currently working for Park and Rec is just myself as the director mm -hmm. and no other staff members. So if I were going to put together a program, say April vacation or a summer program, I would have <coughs> only be able to have 10 kids at that program. Um, so in order to bring in any type of revenue for Park and Rec, I would need to have some kind of staff on deck with me to have kids come to the camp, or to the program, excuse me. Um, right now, we are outsourcing programs to come in, so we need to pay that program to come in, and it's not you know, they can hold their ratio by bringing people in and having their own workers. Um, it doesn't allow Park and Rec to run the program. So if they bring in a program and they want to have 30 kids, if they have three adults to run that program, that works for them, but we need to pay them. If I were able to have staff on hand, then I could put together a program to run 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. with, you know, a few staff to run hourly um, and put that program together and run a camp, or a program, excuse me, for the summer, or for April, or an after school program, or a half day program, what have you. Okay, and how were they doing it before? Do you know? Were we they, well, they had North Adley Hall, so they had the space, and mm -hmm. I believe that there were, um, we had correct me if I'm wrong, but they had um, students working for them, and they had Part-time. Um, part they had a part-time clerical okay. worker. But we had students, and what we what did you do? Pay them for the just the time? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And and um, without having to. But it wasn't an employee. It was just you right. paid. Right. Right. And okay. you know the the paying out of the revolving fund is something that has been frowned upon, and you know, so it's um, so you couple that with the um, need for facilities now. Uh, in this interim period where we're, we don't have the, the space to, to host the host programs like we used to. Mm -hmm. So it does, um, in order to keep the program somewhat affordable, we're trying not to, uh, you know, share all of those costs. Mm. Uh, so we're, we're trying to, you know, bring some of this in and, and having these extra resources will allow us to do the uh, vacation and summer programming, uh, bring some of the revenue back into the department that was lost for lack of facilities. Mm. So where are you going to hold all your programs? Currently we were able to use school space mm -hmm. um, and we do have to um, pay for the custodial um, use. Right now I have the, the school secured for six weeks for the summer mm -hmm. and I have to bring in programs because I don't have anyone else to have the staff ratio. Um, so we have programs like Art Ventures on, on board and things mm -hmm. like that for the summer. Um, but if I were able to bring in a staff member or uh, part-time staff, I could run programs, um, kind of like a day program where I could have activities and things like that as long as I had someone else on staff to make the ratio. We could have, you know, 10, 20 kids sign up and have activities for them to do and keep it low cost for the parents and still bring in a profit. Okay. So that's pretty much it for the contingent item. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I yeah, sure. Kind of. 
okay. supports what she was saying about that. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I have more. Okay. Otherwise, as you know, the, the park and rec budget took a pretty good shot mm -hmm. last fall. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's not a lot more to really give. And right. we're trying to get a little bit of that back mm -hmm. so we can maintain ratio and have and run these programs for, for, uh, you know, for the, the kids in town. Sure. And for the families that, that need that support. Is there any, you know, I, I know you mentioned some of the students, is there any type of um, collaboration with the schools to, and I, I'm just thinking, you know, maybe, you know, some of the older kids, you know, they're looking to do volunteer work, things like that nature. We, we do put pro marital kids to work at, at, at quite a number of just events. Just had them at the Easter yeah. event. Well, I, I, I figured you did a lot of that yeah. as it was, because I would see your daughter around a lot, oh, yeah. a lot of <laughs> events. And husband, and son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I figured, though, it was good for their yeah. resume, you know, yeah. to, for the schools. Right. When, when they're it, applying. That, she had multiple hats on. We do Girl Scouts are right. a big help for things. Um, and we've enjoyed years and then of Girl Scout support. Yeah. But, yeah. The different troops, you know, have different makeups and what leaders are allowing them to do and do okay. alone or not. But I've always advocated for park and rec, and we do have certain troops assigned to help out at certain events. Great. Some are a lot of those kids are now at an age that help out with like our lunch with Santa and the Easter thing where they have summer jobs. That's true. So that's where the, the part is where we would have, you know, summer programs before you'd be looking for that right in between. Mm. You know. and, and if you look at the rates that we're looking to compensate, it's not like we're yeah. hiring, you know, PhDs. professionals <laughs> who we're bringing in. Right, or for that. a full, you know, allotted, that would cover obviously a whole summer's worth of programming, but it wouldn't be, you know, park and rec maybe a half a week, one week, or, you know, four hours a day for one week kind of thing mm -hmm. each week it's of the summer. Supplemental. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could still bring in the programs that are really popular with the kids right now and then supplement, like Andy said, with park and rec programs. So, so um, in this you're mentioning that uh, you request an amount of $6,864. Do you think that you could come up with eight hundred and that, that amount in revenues off of the programs that you would have? Well, again, uh, we the the uh, new facilities needs are something that have to be factored in as well. Okay. So, um, you mean to off fully offset it with user fees? Mm. I don't know if we can. Um, you know, it would be nice if we could, and not expend the money as you know as in the past. We typically have budgeted a fair amount, but we rarely get go even get close to spending all of our budget. Mm. This is a this is being able to go in and reserve a program and make sure that we know that we have staffing to meet the uh, you know state mandated minimums mm -hmm. uh, without um, the risk of there being inadequate uh, people paying up front or last minute items coming in and not, maybe not you know not knowing whether or not we can have a program because mm -hmm. we're not sure we can maintain the staff. Yeah. So this is a, an assurance that we can go ahead with the program and at least generate some of that revenue, kick that that back into the. Are you doing anything with the Saterka Park? Are we? Um, as far as well, I it's under like construction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. what you're still construction. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is this is going to be it's going to be a phase work. two of getting that back up. You know, of really advancing it from being, um, you know, the first phase of growing it and getting it mm -hmm. you know, getting level and taking out the trees this year. It's uh, going to be uh, improving it. In fact, we have some volunteers. That are uh, what some Girl looking, Scouts that are yeah. looking to contribute and build to, towards our gold, mm -hmm. uh, star, gold award. Yeah. Gold award. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Um, to um, put some exercise stations in that. And that's part of the. Oh. On the walk, year. up higher on the walking trail. Yeah. But also, we're looking to get on the select board agenda coming up in April, too, for the next phase. So mm -hmm. it's moving. So, the yeah, the bid should be closing out yeah. today. I think so. Oh, tomorrow, rather. Yeah. So, we should have a better idea of and the vendor for moving that. So we look forward to trying to use that in the future. That and there will mm -hmm. be a pavilion com uh, coming into the uh, elementary school. That's oh, so you could well. use That's that. Another mm -hmm. uh, park and rec uh, yeah. sponsored 
by the PTO mm -hmm. uh, and Steve Lusuru and their donations and, yep. and, and the building inspectors volunteer time. But that'll be um, you know another asset that not only Park and Rec but other organizations will be able to use to service the community. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, student participation looked like in the various programs? I guess the last three years, if you can give me a quick rundown on like more of the more popular ones, then kind of go down the list. Um, like soccer? You yeah. mean like an athletic Yeah, just like numbers if we're talking about bringing in the additional part-time staff to basically staff these programs. Oh, well, no, it's not that type of it program. Wouldn't be it the would be the vacation friends. programs. But what we currently don't have running that we want to we had bring, a running before yeah, we want to bring back. when we uh, had yes. North Hadley Hall. Gotcha. And then we were transitioned out of there last year. <coughs> and, and it's been a recovery of trying to get ourselves back, you know, get the office straightened out, get the, you know, find out where we can run this stuff. Um, because we were running it, and it was quite a, actually a, a pretty good revenue generator for the department. And uh, there was actually that question came up during budget review saying, how come your revolving fund slipped a little bit this year? Well. In part because we can't run those. So, the revenue positive so are goals. you not running them right now? Or are you just running I, them? I came in in January and I attempted to put together a February break. <laughs> February program. bank? Yeah. And um, I had a few kids sign up, but not enough to run the program. Um, and again, that was a program that I had to outsource to bring someone in. Um, I have one posted for April, and I'm hopeful that mm -hmm. kids will sign up. And I do have, like I said, the six weeks. Um, slotted for the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I have things put in place and um, hopefully within the next two weeks all that information will be out and available to the public for them to sign up. It's always been nice. We were seeing emails come along when uh, there's any school breaks, you know, like February breaks, April breaks, Christmas breaks. It's a spot for the kids to, you know, mm -hmm. during the week or you know, I think even you might have done things like if there's half days or something yeah. before. So it's yeah. great, it's especially for people like who are working. It's a and that's my hope place. that that it will get back to that, so that mm -hmm. parents do have that to rely on. That they'll know that Park and Rec will always have something going, so mm -hmm. they can just call or email and get their name. On. Space is limited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you guys looked into collaborating with Amherst and Northampton for any of these programs, rather than like outsourcing to a private company? As far as bringing them into, well, we, we've talked with LSSE in the past for other programs. Um, it's, um, and where the parents are going now, I, you know, it, it's, it, but as far as using their facilities for running a program? Or More, I guess, using their staff in the same way that you would use, I guess, this third party to contract in to run these programs if you'd rather have a partnership with Amherst or Northampton for some of these programs. There might be parents. They're living kind of like in the middle of the two that might be looking at both programs or mm -hmm. participating in both that we could get back into Hadley. Yeah, there's been efforts in the past to, to collaborate with them. Keep in mind that uh, a few years ago that Amherst was under a fair amount of duress and their staff levels beyond administrative are relatively low. They Most of their programs are run by third-party vendors. Um, and whereas Hadley has had a strong tradition of running uh, a lot of that stuff in-house, but except when it comes to things like Legos or the magic uh, or the art yeah. programs, um, and people are willing to pay for that, you know. Uh, we've had some collaborative efforts for, um, like, theater, and it's another group that we want to get back up and running. That was a very strong program here for, for quite some time. Uh, then the North Hadley Hall got restricted due to egress issues uh, and concerns about the building, and then eventually, as you know, we lost that, so we're, but that is something that we're talking with the school, the Hadley School, about um, revitalizing in some fashion or another. So I mean, we're, we're doing what we can to reach out to mm -hmm. the resources around us. It is, um, but given the transition, we're, you know, just starting to get traction here because she just started in January, so. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to go over? No. Yeah, so then this amount for the $6,800, looking ahead, is this kind of like a sustainable what you'd like to see? Or you, because it's a transition period, looking to turn this into eventually a part-time dedicated staff person or as these programs grow, what's your kind of it, vision for it? It used to be a part-time dedicated staff person. We had somebody on there. Um, and um, about a year and a half ago, she um, 
I was a position at the yeah, school. Took a position at the school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with everything, you know, all the transition, we said, okay, we're not going to do anything about that right now. So we want to get our, you know, land and figure out where we're going to go before we say we need a, a, a you know, a dedicated 19 an hour, a hour a week person, which that was. I mean, we could certainly foresee if we have enough growth in the programming to justify it, yes, then we would see that as being uh, a more regular mm-hmm. position. Valerie, you have any questions? Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We need to make our, our town better and our mm-hmm. children experience it better. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Thanks for the support. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks for hustling. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, let's, let's, yeah, okay, come on up. Veteran services. Veteran services. Okay, let's see where you are. Veteran services. 76. 76. I don't know if you, we have an extra book here too if you want to see what we're looking at. All right. <laughs> So we could go um, whatever you would like to discuss or go over with us. Well, um, kind of an update, and okay. I, I, I know I owe the town the, the town report. I'm trying to finish that today. Had a couple of emergencies, but um, of the eleven communities in the district, you guys are pretty much staying the same as far as the state benefits that we provide. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a perfect reimbursement rate, so all the money that's due back to us, we're getting back. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the last quarter, for an example, was, um, yeah, so a three-month period, we put out $19,728, and we are going to be getting all um, 75% of that back. So Mm -hmm. uh, we've done well on that. Um, That number has been pretty consistent where in other communities it's going down. I'm not exactly sure why, but um, some of it's the age of our veterans. But what's happening with the population now is the Vietnam veterans are now going to be on the rise, I would imagine, in the next couple of years, especially their spouses and, and you know, needing services from us. The one thing that's happened in Hadley is our um, filing claims for the VA, getting federal money to assist. A lot of veterans who are not in our low income, you know, really need emergency assistance have been coming in and we've been winning those kinds of cases. So as of, geez, not even that long ago, we, um, there's currently 67 um, identifiable people here in Hadley uh, that are receiving reimbursements from the VA system. And on a monthly basis, there's $89,000 coming in. Mm-hmm. And so that's an increase from previous times. So that's going up money coming in from the VA federal government to the citizens here in Hadley. Mm-hmm. So, we're doing more of that work. The other stuff is kind of staying level, not going down. Um, district wide, we have s- all the stuff gets determined. All of our salaries are determined through the district, through the city of Northampton. So we did have some rearranging that we had to do. We had a, um, what do they call it? A wage and classification study done. It hasn't been solidified yet, so some things might change, but we've anticipated a lot of it. So my staff has changed some. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So that's a little bit of the added cost and of course the health care, um, you know, everybody's health insurance has gone up. So that's also an increase. So that's why you're going to see a little bit of the increase in the budget district wide for um, our services. But most of that is, of course, always health care. Always seems to be the thing that does it. Okay. But there has been some change in staff. Everybody got a raise through the unions, and one of the people in my staff who has been with me for, oh gosh, almost 12 years has. Her position has changed, and we're getting a new clerical staff. So, some of it's that, but okay. for the most part, we're trying to stay within a budget. So, I mean, most of that's paid out through the government. How about so when you say when this increase comes in for um, under other expenses, what is the what 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 is listed for? Other, would you consider other expenses? Where what would that increase be for? Uh, I believe. It is <clears throat> okay. I don't know as far as the town is concerned what that expense is. I'm sorry. That's okay, David. I don't know that line. David either. might be able to fill us yeah. in a little more. He probably. Yeah, I, I, I have, you know, I have the burial expenses, sure. the memorial day expenses. And, uh, those, well, the burial expense goes through me. The memorial day expenses goes through the folks that run the parade. Mm -hmm. um, the vet benefits, of course, go through me. Mm -hmm. But that other expense, I don't know really what that's for. I don't. Doesn't look like anything I use, so it might also be something that the town does. Yes. Okay. For, um, we can ask David about that. It looks sure. pretty consistent, pretty tight, mm -hmm. so I'm not too worried. So under the vet benefits with that eighty thousand, that's what you're primarily talking about in terms of the wage classification study. You're anticipating the actual is actually going up a little bit. Well, that that um, vet benefits going up. That that is actually the money that we pay out to the individuals and to the families. So. That is the stuff that gets reimbursed 75 percent. So, but it comes out from us first, and then a year later we get it back. The the part of the budget that we talk about, um, I'm looking at your numbers, but there is a an assessment that the towns each town pays into the budget, and there's an increase here uh, in Hadley of. $1,469 is the projected increase that would be added to the assessment. And that's just for the operation. That's for the staff, all their bennies, um, the travel to come to all the different towns. <coughs> so when you look at the whole operating budget, everybody went up by a certain percentage and it's 1469 and it's based on population, so. Okay, because I'm just looking at so after an 8,700 reduction, we'd still be at 80, but the actuals are haven't hit 70 yet. But even with a modest bump up, there's still $10,000 cushion. Is that? It, it basically on on that line, I'm, it is pretty much the people that we had budgeted for. Um, what we're actually paying out has gone down, so we just lowered the amount of projected budget that would be paid out. Like I say, for that quarter, it was. Um, Yeah, so if you take that $19,700 that we paid out in over a three month period, I just basically take that number and multiply it by four and say, that's probably what we're gonna be having to pay out. That's where the 80,000 comes from. A little over in case there's a burial, well, you've got burial benefits, in case there's just an increase in people, but that budget is based on, this is what we paid for this quarter. Um, we have to make sure we have that for the next year for the next four quarters, again, 75% of that comes back into the general fund. It's not all money that stays out, it comes back, but not all of it. Right. I'm just trying to figure out why it's been consistently coming in 15 to 20,000. The actuals have been coming in 15 to 20,000 lower than what we keep budgeting. And so if we can cut that more, and if that gives you any hesitation, I'm wondering why we keep an extra 10,000 in there. Because, well, because this, we never know how people are going to work. 
but I basically would take either the last three months or the last six months and then make an estimate. And this is based on the last three months. We were high, we were 19,700. Multiplied by four, we went, okay, it's about 80,000. Um, it could go down if somebody gets on to a VA money instead. That's always possible, it fluctuates, but I just figure it's easier to budget up front rather than coming back to you in March or February and saying, we need more money. Sure, but so as we're pinching pennies, you wouldn't feel comfortable having it any lower than 80,000? You could probably feel safe to drop it maybe five to $8,000, but then there's always a possibility I'd come back. Gotcha, all right, you know. fair enough. All good then. All right. uh, thank Great. you very much for coming. Thank you. thank you. For explaining all that. Sure. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. Sounds right. good. Library. Library page seven. Patrick. Patrick. I made a little bit of Matt Weinberg. I'm one of the trustees. Oh, okay. Yep, and I'm me. Gabriel. Good night. Nice to meet you. So, put together some uh, <coughs> fun facts about the budget okay. and what we're up to. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and the first thing that I wanted to talk about on here is that when I went to examine the um, proposal that, that David compiled for all of the departments, and I, when I looked at hours, um, I noticed that there are some issues with the numbers as they are. Presented. Okay. Um, so first off, in the in the first two lines, in mm -hmm. you'll see it for the current year. These these two numbers are wrong. Okay. So for FY eighteen four um, for li library and salary, that's that's me and part time library salaries. Both of those numbers they don't reflect two things. They don't reflect in my case um, the fact that I have a negotiate. I mean I have a contract. Okay. So every year it's it's renegotiated. So as of last year, that number went up um, to roughly $57,000 and then the town cost of living adjustment mm -hmm. on top of that. So that the actual number is, as you see on the note um, on the page that I just gave you, it's actually 58722. Okay. And the, um, from, what I, from what I understand, the, the number for part-time library salaries, I don't think that the 5% COLA is reflected in that 76, 726. I believe that's actually supposed to be a 77849. So th these are things that I need to sit down with the accountant. And I've actually brought this to their attention. And okay. part, of, part of it was corrected um, in the VADAR reports that we receive. I don't know why it's not corrected here. Um, so because of those discrepancies, my, my understanding is that our actual FY18 budget is 202196. And again, I need to sit down with them to, to confirm this, but um, okay. but I think that's the real number, to the best of my knowledge. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that's clarified, so that when you look at the numbers for what we're proposing, it doesn't look, in some cases, like it's a leap. We're trying to you know we're trying to do what uh, okay. David asked, which is to you know, find savings if we can, um, and at the same time, we're actually requesting just because of how busy we are and how much is happening with. Uh, you know, the library construction project, et cetera. Um, we're, we're asking that the town consider adding another benefit position to the library um, staff. And what we're planning to do is basically take uh, one of the part time positions that's currently maxed out at 19, you know, the, at the threshold before benefits kick in, mm -hmm. and we'd like to push that to 27 hours mm -hmm. so that we have someone instead of just being here um, on, a, on a two day, like two, two full days in a morning have that person be able to be there four days because we really need kind of the continuity of, of sort of like an, uh, an assess uh, assistant director, perhaps we're, that's the, you know, the title that we're contemplating for this. Um, because it's just, there's, I mean, we're a very customer service um, organization. And so it really is important that we have some continuity through the week. And, you know, ordinarily that, that person is me, but because of everything that's going on and the number of meetings that are happening, um, it's just, it can't, it just can't be me at mm -hmm. this point. 
So we really, I need assistance in that regard. Um, and we're, we're, we're busier than ever, and the numbers continue to go up. I think this will, this probably will be um, a record-breaking year in terms of circulation and patron visits, mm -hmm. um, which have gone up um, dramatically over the last 10 years. And you know, it, it's, that's not reflected in our, I mean, our budget goes up you know, modestly, modestly every year, but we're, we're, we're getting really busy. Mm -hmm. So why take it from 19 to 27 and make it benefited rather than hire another part-timer, say at 19, do you get more bank Well, we, 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 we've actually kind of like taken that approach in the, in the past few years we, we took. So when I was hired, the differential between what I was, what I started out in my salary and, and what the, my predecessor was making, we took that money and we basically did that, we hired more part-time staff. And that allowed us to diversify in terms of the skills. So now we have like a dedicated young adult services librarian that comes in and, and essentially works, you know, focuses on that age group, but also works just generally with everyone at the circulation desk. Um, you know, we have a, a dedicated children's services librarian that works with that uh, demographic. We have um, uh, an adult services, uh, well, uh, a li the title is library assistant. Um, but that's, it's sort of a general adult services person uh, and we have a circulation assistant. So we, the, the staff that we have are specialized and, and that has been important. But really the issue here is about continuity. As I'm saying, that, that having a bunch of part-time people dealing with, um, you know, hundreds of patrons a week, it, it, it's more helpful to be able to have someone that I can rely on um, for some of the administ administrative things that we need to do as well as some of the kind of continuity of customer service. Um, so that's kind of why why we're looking to do that. So um, based on so based on based on what David asked, which was to um, to try to make, you know toe the line and keep our costs down, we did kind of um, make adjustments to the budget to try to accommodate this and make it. I mean, aside from the addition of the cost of the benefits themselves, um, we tried to keep the, this change essentially a, a neutral change. Um, and actually, if if my numbers are all correct, which I will confirm um, as soon as I can to the accountant. Um, I do believe that we're actually under where we were last year for the total operating costs of the department. Um, so we're, we're, again, trying to get more, um, we're, you know, we're trying to get as much value out as we can out of the staff and out of the budget that we have. We're just trying to do it as efficiently as we can. Mm -hmm. So uh, like, for instance, one of, the, one of the changes that we made was to eliminate um, about twelve hundred dollars that we would use for substitute substitute staff. So when someone is out or on vacation, you know, we, mm -hmm. we have um, generally have someone that comes in and cover. Um, so we eliminated that. Um, we kind of shaved some of the money off of the uh, the budget for library materials because we have some gift funds donations that come in um, that we can use to make up for that shortfall. Mm -hmm. There is a, uh, a Board of Library Commissioners formula that we have to adhere to, so we have to we have to buy a certain amount of uh, of library materials as a percentage of our total budget, um, and that keeps us that keeps our certification, and it also qualifies us for uh, state aid um, for public libraries. So we receive about this year we received about seven thousand dollars in state aid. Um, so. So if we're looking at a 27-hour benefited position, yeah. we'd like to see that closer to 40 hours just for the efficiency if we're going to be paying them the benefits mm -hmm. then to get more use out of them for the admin support. For the next year, do you see anywhere else where you could reduce, like you said with the substitute, but in another way, reduce hours from other part-time staff to increase this and make it essentially a full-time position that we're going to make benefited? Because right over 20 hours to get them the benefits if we're not going to be using them the full 40 seems pretty inefficient and just financially speaking. Right. Um, that's that is potentially possible. I mean, certainly if if there were, if we had um, you know turnover in the staff. So generally, if, when someone leaves, we kind of look at that like tinkering with the with the model of, of how we're staffed. Um, and we have you know we have done that in the past. We you know we did have um, recently we had two we had two circulation assistants and one of them left. And rather than replacing that person, we took those hours and we you know kind of spread them out amongst the staff in, in ways that made sense to us at the time to, to kind of, again, because it is difficult. The more, um, you know, part-time people you have, the more 
well, the more turnover, but also the more difficulties that you have with schedules because you know five or six people all get colds, and it's just it can be very chaotic keeping things running with only part-time staff. Um, so that's definitely a possibility if you know if, if we were looking at um, a changeover in the staff, we could. I mean, definitely, I would keep all options on the table in terms of how we allocated those hours going forward. But it is important that we do that we have that sort of specialization. Um, in terms of the, uh, um, you know, the knowledge of the staff to make sure that, that all um, age groups and demographics are being represented in library service because I don't know in the past that that's always been the case. I think right now we have a very good balance um, and that's, that's something that I would like to keep in place. Um, so it is, it is a balancing act to make sure that we have. Um, I'm curious yeah. how, how many hours um, a week each of these people work for. So we have. I'm the only person who's there full time. We have the children's services librarian is the other benefited staff person. She's there 27 hours. Um, the young adult services person is there 13, or maybe it's actually it's 15. Uh, the circus assistant is 13, and the library assistant is 19. So then, in taking this position from 19 to 27 hours, you're thinking with the same staff person currently in that role. Okay. And, and there's taking that. on more responsibilities. Right, yeah, because she's already forward. she's actually already doing that. She's already basically taking on as much as she can handle in in her limited 19 hours. Um, but this will allow for more of the um, it just will allow for more sort of project based work rather than just the day to day operating on the circulation desk. Um, but there are a lot of you know a lot of things that we would like to do in the library that are somewhere between you know, longer term projects, but they're also just things that need to be done on an ongoing basis, like weeding the collection. So everything that comes into, if we buy a book, we have to take one book out of the library because we're just maxed out in terms of space. So someone has to do that work. Um, and it, it sometimes the, is the sort of thing that becomes deferred because it's, it doesn't seem like the, the top priority. So it allows us to have, you know, a lot of those things that are second priority things get done before they become a huge, you know, a huge task. Okay. I think it's worth a conversation with the select board. You don't want to necessarily budget for an individual, but if we have an individual that we can envision growing into a full 40 hour week or 37 and a half hour a week right. role, then we should kind of be able to project that out a little bit. I, I, also, what part of my thinking is that whether it's this particular person here or someone else, mm -hmm. if you have a good person, you want to retain them. Yeah. And, and this is one way we can ensure that we have the best way of retaining a good person by having this more hours and the benefits. Yeah, and the, and the person that, that we're contemplating for this is, has been an employee and working here for more than 10 years. I don't, it's, so it's not, it's not someone that's, that we don't know if they'll be here in two years. I mean, of course we don't know, but um, by all indications, <coughs> this is someone that plans to continue working for the town of Adler. Gotcha. So, uh, what else can I? I have one I more you? question because yeah, uh, you meant you started. You talked a little bit about the um, the uh, <coughs> supplies and the book, you know, and you said there yeah. was a percent. Was there a percentage that you have to have to be? Yep. And, and what is that percentage? So there, there are two parts of this formula for certification. One yes. one is that we need to to um, spend roughly nineteen percent of our budget 19%. on on new materials, um, uh -huh. and. So in this in this the case of this year, we do have some gift funds. You know, so for instance, when someone passes away and they, um, you know, they want gifts in memorial to go to the library, those gifts go into what we call the small gift, um, the small gift account, and we can use that for, you know, um, sometimes people will ask that books be purchased, like children's books be purchased mm -hmm. uh, in memory of, of a loved one. Um, so we can use those funds and that the spending and that would of those go funds towards the nineteen. Towards the, yeah. Okay. Right. We can't do that forever because there's not that much money in the in the gift fund. So we're we're dependent on people making gifts for that purpose. Okay. Um, but for this year, we, we've decided that we could do that and not be in any jeopardy in terms of our certification. The other part of the um, the uh, certification formula is that our our total budget in general needs to keep up with inflation. So there's a formula where they, they ask you to calculate the previous three years of your, uh, you know, the total for the previous three years of your budget, and then multiply it by 1.025% to, to make sure that it 
or the average of those three years by 1.025. Um, and that gives you basically what you need to, to be spending to keep up with inflation. But the state aid that, that, um, that we receive every year essentially covers that increase to the budget. So it's sort of a, a neutral. Is that in um, the uh, the thirty six thousand seven fifty? That's all that's, the materials. Yep. That's what we yep. were just talking about. Yep. That's what that consists. That's right. Okay. She can this. No, but it's basically it's basically what those numbers. Okay, yes. this is a lot easier to read. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it shows that the three the three areas. That's the sim yeah. That's the simplified. That's the worksheet that I yeah. worked from. To put this yeah. Okay. It gets us to less than what we were last year. This is how it breaks down. Okay. Anything else you want to go over? Um, I don't think so. Other than just to, to reiterate that um, you know the, the usage of the library is is booming. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's really very busy, consistently, um, and um, you know I think the. I think the, the support of the town meetings and the votes just you know, for the new facility show that the, this is something that's important in the community and it is a valued service. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we take that we take the service aspect of what we do very very seriously. Mm -hmm. So we, we, it's important that we have um, you know, the kind of staffing that can um, provide high level customer service, very professional and um, knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And. Um How's the building going right now as far as your current building? Um, do you, is there any, is that going to get you through until your new building is built? Is there any big things that is happening that you, you know, for maintenance? Like Just roof, curious. Roof falling in or anything Yeah, like that. something like that. <laughs> um, no, I mean, fortunately, fortunately, in, in China, if I'm not thinking of anything here, but the, I mean, the, the, the trustees historically have done a very good job of maintaining that building, mm -hmm. so, um, its general condition is, is very good. Mm -hmm. You know the issues with the building and the, you know the, the need for the new building really stem from space. Well, yeah, space um, accessibility. Uh, accessibility, lack of elevator to the restrooms downstairs, those kinds of things. Um, yeah, but general yeah, condition yeah. of the building is. I mean, is the, good. It, it definitely needs upgrading, electrical, lighting, and we've we've that's been kind of rolling along, and uh, we came to the conclusion that um, because we are getting this new building built in within a reasonable period of time that we would probably we were going to defer that even though we had gone we had done some of the initial work mm -hmm. and actually had some some money for that as well but we're going to defer that till for the next you know because the next people who are going to be in this won't be the library it'll be you know, right. and they may have particular needs right. for instance just as an example if it's if um, Hadley Media goes in there right they may have completely different electrical requirements than we, we do. Mm -hmm. So rather than kind of do it twice, sure. you know, we can, you know, we feel we can, the building <coughs> will still be there for another three years for sure, and we can get by. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not ideal. I'd love to have better lighting, and, you know, do an electrical panel and all that stuff, but it, it doesn't seem like it made sense for us to mm -hmm. proceed with that. Mm -hmm. And this is, this, is, um, this is a project that the Municipal Building Committee is right. sort of is sort yeah. of taking taking uh, more responsibility right. for under under the circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're working with them and, and also um, in conversation with CPA about how that's going to work in terms of the funding that's already been allocated and mm -hmm. um, and how it'll work if someone else is taking it on. So that's some, a meeting that will be coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the you know the building is um, it's one of the better maintained buildings in town, to be honest with you, as far mm -hmm. as I can tell. It's, it's like a very yeah. well worn and comfortable shoe yeah. at this point, but it's it's definitely. Time for a bigger, bigger shoe. Okay. Do you have anything, Ellery? Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see what page you're on. <laughs> T 
TV. He's going to be in the Enterprise. Right? Oh, David. Hi there. Nice to, for you to join us. Come on up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, right when I'm looking for the page. Hadley see. Media is uh, in the Enterprise section. 78. Yeah, just see the charges, but I didn't really, I just saw the had the media looking in there. No numbers. So starting on page 71, and the budget's okay. on page 72. Thanks. Okay. All right, anything you'd like to? Um, well, uh, we were asked by David to mm -hmm. show up with the other departments in our group mm -hmm. to discuss ways that we can basically um, find money. Right. We are a little bit constrained compared to other groups because enterprise funds are not allowed to just give money to the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, we're certainly cable access is not allowed to do that. And I don't think other enterprise funds are allowed to do that as well. So, in the, so the way I looked at it was if I ran a super tight budget, mm -hmm. Like you say, see what we have fifty dollars put for supplies. Well, we're going to spend more than fifty dollars on supplies. So how do we accomplish this? Well, we're going to raise some revenue. Uh, maybe sell. I'm hoping to sell some underwriting. So, for instance, right now we show all these meetings, and there's no underwriting support at the beginning of the meetings. However, other community access stations often have support for community coverage of Hadley meetings are provided by. The Hadley Garden Center or whomever else. And so if we are able to, and I believe we will, um, obtain underwriting from some local businesses, then that basically that covers up the amount that we cut from our budget, which by cutting that, then we were able to give more to the overhead, um, the administrative overhead. That's kind of the only way we are able to do that. To do that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, so in looking at it that way, even though it, it's really tight, I anticipate that we'll be able to raise about $1,500. And mm -hmm. that should be enough to cover where it's tight. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a very simple budget, quite frankly. We're a very yeah. small department. Oh, well, that's great. I mean, so you're just going to go out and get advertisers. Make, that's right. And you're going to sell you ads. And, and, and I've think, done that for my own TV I think that's shows. Great. Yeah, so absolutely. I know it's doable. It's just getting out there. And that's, and, and that's 1500 it seems definitely. Well, and, and what's, well and, but the thing is, there's a portion of our budget that's significant. Because that's huge, yeah. So it's that's just. That's great. It's that, but it's that simple too. I like it. Nice. And one thing that um, I hope the viewers understand, and I, I'll take this opportunity, is that um, the general fund or the taxpayers do not fund Hadley Media. They, however, because we, we get our money through charter, uh, subscribers pay 4% of their bill, basically comes to us for our operating costs. And then mm -hmm. um, every 10 years, the town will negotiate a new contract, and in the contract, there'll be um, some capital money put in there for upgrading the equipment. For instance, we received um, just recently $75,000, which we're not going to actually touch for a, f a few years at least, because that money is pretty much earmarked to start replacing the equipment that we just bought this past year to update the old equipment that needed to be updated, mm -hmm. but that had come in the first capital infusion of the contract that we're currently under. And so, um, for instance, the, the switcher that John is using over there, that's an eight, $7,900 piece of equipment, mm -hmm. and we have one of them. Um, it should last about five years. Mm -hmm. Now, in our equipment repairs, I think that we're down to something like, is it $500? Yes. Um, but right now, all the new equipment we bought is under warranty. Yeah. In a couple of years, it won't be under warranty anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there comes a point that, at what point do you put repairs in, and at what point do you buy a new piece of equipment? And the technology is constantly changing. I went down to Northfield, Northampton Community TV the other day and was talking with their executive director, and they use for some of their meetings a switcher that's only $1,000. Now, it doesn't do everything that our switcher does, but you know, rather than just buying everything brand new and, and then hoping that it lasts, I'd rather just wait and 
and see as technology unfolds, buy it as we need it. Because right now we're in, a, we're in a good place. We've we've upgraded a lot of equipment. If you look at this table, you don't see microphones everywhere and cables hanging out everywhere. Right. Um, a year ago, about the time I started, that's how the meetings were run. And based upon where someone was sitting, you could hear them or not, based upon where their microphones were. Right. And so now we have, we bought quality shotgun microphones. We only have two of them, and they do a better job with the audio than we might have had with half a dozen or more um, microphones right on the table. So we're just looking to basically raise our production value and you know, bring more value to the, to the community. And not just coverage of the meetings. I mean, frankly, that should be a third of what we do. Um, typically, cable access stations are referred to as PEG. So it's public, education, and government. And so we've been very strong on government. Richard Truswell, for years, covered all these meetings and uh, put a lot of energy into it. But, that, but he wasn't necessarily bringing in um, members of the community for training and for signing out equipment. So when we upgraded these, the cameras, the cameras that he had been using for covering town meetings, we now sign out. And often I will sign out all three cameras in the a, in a space of a week. So we have volunteers coming in who are learning how to produce. Uh, we've produced quite a number of programs with them. And, and as more and more people become aware that it's free, <laughs> and I will train anybody on a first come, first serve basis, um, that outreach is having results. We're, mm -hmm. you know, more and more often I have people just stopping and saying, hey, I have an idea for a show. Okay, well, let's talk about it. How can we make this happen? And so the viewers at home, because I never talk to them, we cover the meetings, but we don't talk. Sure. If you have an idea for a show, you know, go to hadleymedia.org. I'm Drew Hutchison. You can find me. I'll, I'm happy to help you. It's free. Mm -hmm. Pretty good bargain. That's great. That's great. So do you have any questions? So about like, the uh, how about... Uh, the graduations. Do yeah, we've, well, I, I, we've know filmed you, those. I know you film right. those. Do you sell the CDs? We don't, and there are complications with that because um, we don't have the rights to those to everybody's image. So they're in a public setting, so we can film it. But then when you start selling it, sometimes there can be there's a little bit of a gray area. Okay. Um, so that's not something I want to do. What I, what I would like to do is just provide is such a good value that people take advantage of the opportunity, which is free use of signing out our cameras, just like a library, um, free training, just like Parks and Rec may train you on something, or, or the library may train you on something, we, we provide it. In fact, we're, I've talked with Patrick about setting up a summer program at the library, where maybe for one hour a week, I go in and I'm available, and kids can sign up, or seniors, and they start getting trained. And if they have an interest in acting, well, I can help them with acting. If they want to learn how to write a script, I can teach them how to write a script. If they want to just run camera, Teach. So it's really based upon what they want to put into it, but we are available. And I think that that's something that a lot of the community was not aware that this resource existed because I constantly talk to people and say, hey, how would you like to do X? It's like, I didn't know I can do that. You mean you guys do? It's free? I mean, I, if I say it every day, I, I'm still not saying it enough. Sure, and it sounds like uh, we just listened to Park and Rec saying that they wanted to be involved with theater. Right, and, and, and actually, I film a lot of theater. Um, just two weeks ago, I filmed Pitti Theater in Shelburne Falls. They, were, they have their um, film they do about bees and sustainability. And they're taking it on the road nationally. However, I filmed it, and now it's going to be shown on Happy Media. Mm -hmm. So um, if a theater group wants, if they want to sign out a camera themselves, they can do that. We'll put it on Happy Media. If they want to um, talk to me about hiring me personally, <laughs> they can talk to me. I may not be available, but certainly, it's, it, it's doable. Mm. That's interesting. So do you have an idea for a show? I, I don't, but oh, okay. I, 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 right. I think it's, it's extremely interesting, and I thought it would, might be something that the schools, you know. They, I have offered to the schools. Now, last year we did one PSA on ticks, on tick awareness, mm -hmm. and that was the last day of school. They, they had, we had talked to them, and they spent time with the students writing the script, doing the research, and then... I think it was the last day or the second to last day, they said, okay, we're ready. <laughs> and I went down there and filmed it and put it on TV. And if you watch Happy Media occasionally, it's not airing right now because it's not tick season. But when tick season comes around, we'll start showing that again. And um, like, likewise, the um, police have used us for making public service announcements. So I've offered to all the departments in Hadley, if you have an idea for a public service announcement, it's gonna benefit people, just talk to us. I can't write your script for you because I don't know 
what you want you want you want to share. But I can sit down with anybody and help them formulate what the message is and then get it out there. And so that's just. And how would you get it out? I, I mean, the Hadley Media. Would you post it? Like? Well, it's so everything that we produce locally, mm -hmm. we show on our website, HadleyMedia.org. It mm -hmm. also gets shown on Channel One Ninety One, and the government meetings get shown on One Ninety Two. Mm -hmm. um, very soon, we will have Channel One Ninety Three running, and that's the educational channel. The schools don't actually produce much content, and they they have a, frankly would have a hard time doing it. Um, they would almost need a full time or a, a half time film teacher. To, to get much out of it. I certainly could go and uh, give presentations, and I've offered to do that for Hopkins. I've gone down to the Chinese Immersion School. Mm -hmm. I've taught a couple classes down there. Um, and it basically, it's first come, first serve. It's like if they, like the Chinese Immersion School calling, can you come down and talk to our film class? I went down there, and I, mm. I did an introduction for about an hour, and then they called me back. Okay, we've made a film. Can you come in and talk to us? And they, I saw their film, and I went in and talked to them about the next steps. So. We're available based upon the hours that we have available. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, give me a call and, and I'll do what I can. Wow, pretty exciting. It is exciting. It's so much fun. And the thing is, it's collaborative. So some people like to work alone, but when you're making a TV show or a film, you get together with your friends and everybody has different ideas. And that's something that when they're done, it's tangible. You could go to hadleymedia.org and you can see, oh, so-and-so made that or so-and-so made that. And so it's there to be seen. Our, our work is totally transparent. You want, mm -hmm. to, you want to know what's going on? Turn on the TV mm -hmm. or go to our website. I didn't, I, I didn't realize uh, there was a website as well as the, um, I have always gone to the um, YouTube. Right. And well, I've been so, in there, I have a, but I'm going to now go to the website. So, right. it so if you go to HadleyMedia.org, um, it will always show you the most recent footage that we've uploaded. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, this meeting right now, we are streaming it to YouTube live. Okay. So it's airing on channel 192 live mm -hmm. to the viewers who subscribe to Charter. If you don't subscribe to Charter, you can still watch the meeting live as it's streaming. Um, however, as soon as the stream is done and John Harrison over there has edited the final version where he drops in the appropriate titles um, and has the outro music, he will upload that to YouTube. Once that's uploaded, then he takes the stream YouTube video down. Our website basically shows you the individual videos, but they're really linking to YouTube. So you could find them through YouTube, but if you go to hadingmedia.org, you're really going to find it. You don't mm. have to hunt for it as, quite as much. Nice. And we, we want people to go there too, because then we can, we can, run, we can run the Google, at Google Analytics and say, oh yeah, you know, we had 200 people watch a school committee meeting once. And Okay, uh, so that many people don't have a life. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, that's one nice thing about having the website is that you can see who's viewing it on the website. On cable access TV, the Nielsen ratings will not actually tell us how many people view hmm. because they don't sell advertisers, advertisements on cable access, so they, they won't even record it. Hmm. All right, I'm good on questions. I learned a lot more than I did. Well, this is the opportunity. <laughs> there you are. So, David, do you have anything you wanted to add? No, you've done a fine job. Thank well, you thank you very much. And David Moskin, you're all set? Yep. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All right, David. So, Council on Aging wanted to be here tonight, but something's come up, so I've rescheduled them for next Tuesday. Okay. Uh, the Tuesday. third. Is, right? We'll be dealing with the state assessments, how much we can do about that. And it's dead and interest, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, the benefits. And mm -hmm. that's probably where most of our conversation will be. So uh, I also asked Tim Ni uh, Nyhart to be here tonight. I don't know if he was. I was mm -hmm. done. Okay, so I'll get him in with you as well. Uh, we were meeting with the ambulance uh, mm -hmm. subcommittee just a few minutes ago, me talking to the town of Amherst. They're looking for Hadley to step up its game with respect to how much we're willing to commit to the ambulance service. is still very much a work in motion. I have a planning number of $145,000 in the budget right now. That number is probably going to drift 
very likely it's going to drift much higher than, than that. So we'll see what we can do about coming in with a solid number before town meeting. Define much more. Uh, you could double it. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, that's the magnitude of some of the changes that they're talking about. So are they um, offering to give us more services for that doubling of the, of the fee? Aye, uh, there be the rub. Uh, so we're working with them on that. So we'll come up with that. And the uh, ambulance study committee is going to come up with a solid recommendation. There will be ambulance service on July 1st. Great. All right. So we have a tri board coming up for which I have not posted you. I assume I'm oh. okay to go ahead and Yes, do that. please. Uh, I think it's the 11th, right? No, no, no. Oh. You have it on for the 4th. You wanted to start okay. talking about. We got it. Uh, let me just take the our. Question. But I also think on the, on the fourth, you're going to have a much better idea about the budget. You'll have gone through all the departments at that point. Um, we also have, we'll, we'll, we may have some updated numbers for you in terms of revenue. So the, um, the third, we have a meeting, and then you're saying we're not having a tri-board on the 11th, we're having, it's on the fourth. Right now, I don't have any meetings scheduled for the 11th. Okay. Okay, that, I'll may, set up. that may change. Okay. Um, I don't know if Terry, I will not be at the fourth. I have a work event. That one. I don't know if we need a quorum. We probably need a quorum. Don't need one. I don't really. We not really. We don't really talk about the issues and where we are. I think at this point we're close enough that any opportunity that we can take in order to move the budget and the warrant to completion for town meeting, we should take that opportunity. Okay. No, I'm sorry, back to um, April 4th for the t uh, tribe board. Is that 7 or 6? It would be at 6 o'clock. Okay. So in positive numbers, uh, our motel and meals tax are coming in above projections. So that's oh, that's positive. Good. So uh, feeling good about some of our revenue projections, we may want to revisit them and, and say, you know, particularly since there's some gaps that are beginning to show up in the budget process, mm -hmm. uh, that we might want to uh, take a look at those and see if we can close that gap. How much are they up by? Uh, quarter to third quarter to third quarter, the the motel is, the meals are up uh, meals are up thirteen percent, and uh, quarter to third quarter to third quarter, uh, the motel is up uh, two point six percent. So, and when you're talking about two point six percent, you're talking about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more. So that's a substantial amount of money that's coming in that we had not planned on seeing. So that's going to help. We're also entering into the final quarter of the year, April 1st to July 30th. In the last two months of the year, we'll be looking at FY18 budgets and start talking about, okay, are there gaps in any of them? either a surplus or is there a deficit and we'll be asking questions about can we do a reserve fund transfer or can we do a um, a line to line transfer uh, that uh, it's always the normal business of any town uh, right now things are looking pretty good uh, my one concern is the property insurance line which it looks like it's a few tens of uh, ten or twenty thousand dollars short but I've got some dividends coming in that will offset that uh, that shortfall. So, okay. otherwise, the big accounts are looking good. The benefits, retirement, health insurance, workers' comp, looking good mm -hmm. today. Today. Now, the, the the ones that we had some adjustments with, 
um, mm -hmm. that we that so far that we've talked to, mm -hmm. such as uh, oh, let's use the town clerk. Mm -hmm. Like we, there were some of them that didn't include cola. Um, that was just looks like we need to make a, a, an adjustment there, mm -hmm. and maybe um, 3,500, which I thought it was. I guess it's for the software maintenance. They're looking to put back. Anyways, for some of these, and and the schools and some of these others, were we gonna go over all these again and meet with you? Or are you gonna? Yeah, I think we I need think to we, tweak them. We yeah. need to tweak them, and we have to provide something for the schools. Yes. Yeah. We need to figure out that. Mm -hmm. So right now we have the schools off 158,000 at this point. Or. Right. For I mean. Compared to, as of right now, just what they presented us versus what's in the book. Yes, yes. So uh, we need to. And, that, and I've been in contact with uh, Superintendent mm -hmm. McKenzie, and that number changes a little bit. Right. They're going to come up with a final number on the 9th. Okay, on so, the 9th. Yeah. Okay. The 9th. The 9th will be a very busy night. The Capital Planning Committee is going to be meeting. Finances meeting, school committee is meeting. Uh, on, on April 9th? April 9th. We're going to go over the yes. warrant. That's when we're going over the warrant. Okay. Yeah. There's a bid that came in from the schools which came in too high. The uh, HVAC project over at the, uh, at the elementary school. Uh, the low, apparent low bidder for the project came in at about $553,000. Their budget is three, three sixty. dollars uh, It's a gap of about $170,000. They've got some other funds that they can apply to it. So we have to talk about how do we close that gap. And that's part of the work of the Capital Planning Committee on, on that Monday. So we actually may want to have a joint meeting, Capital and Finance. Uh, capital starts at five, you start at six. Uh, you may want to blend into each other. Gabriel, you're on the cap, you're on both, so. I could uh, probably, where, where do we, uh, meeting here? Mm -hmm. Capital planning yeah. starts here, yeah. at five? At five. We'll talk about the school HVAC project with Chris Desjardins, the business manager, and as soon as we're done with him, he's going to bolt over to the uh, Hopkins Academy to present the operational budget for the school department. Okay. So. I forgot what, I, I was unclear when they were going to put in their vote or when they were going to decide on the the uh, reserve fund that we talked about, the stabilization oh, fund. Oh, I, I gave a presentation to them and they're going to take a vote on that ninth. On the ninth, that's yeah. when they're going to do it? Yeah. So, okay. I don't know how you all feel about it and I uh, don't know how the select board feels about it. Yeah. So, and it may be that we're not ready for prime time. This may be something that we defer to the fall town meeting. Did you want to talk about that maybe a little bit? You know what we're I think in theory it makes sense, but I'd like to get the school committee's feedback first, mm -hmm. since obviously they're most hands-on with their own budget to see if it'd be useful. Right. And then based on their feedback, I think we can chime in and go from there. They, uh, I went to the meeting yes, uh, Monday, uh, and was when David presented, um, seemed like uh, they were, uh, there was some hesitation um, the theory of what we're and, and they asked me and I said what we're looking for is basically if we're going to give you a reserve fund or a stabilization fund then we're looking for you to use some more of your fund because they they have their own stabilization fund that that's the school choice right they have a, a school choice fund which they say they don't want to be below a certain amount so um, if we, and it's for risk, and if we give them a stabilization fund for risk, then you could use more of your own. That was the theory. Um, but I think that, um, too, there, there was some 
um, questions about how they can get the money out and, 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 and they have some concerns about you know accessing it and things like that um, but I uh, I think they might they, they weren't it didn't seem like they were looking they didn't some may not like the idea of use um, using their funds lower than what's voted what they've already voted upon you know using more of their money using more of the school choice so I don't There's, there's a lot of questions out there because there's questions, they have questions on how it's going to keep uh, replenishing itself. And unlike the budget, this one is not that time sensitive. If we need to take some more time to study it, then there's no harm in putting it up into the fall. If people need more time to have their questions settled. Mm -hmm. So they, they came up with the dollar amount that they hold there is based on the grants um, and they feel like it, so if the grants go away, that, that they have enough budgeted for that. Am I right, mm -hmm. David? That's mm -hmm. that's the money that they're holding. So, but that, I mean, it's such a big chunk of what we're looking at here, so it makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's best Spanish standard best management practice. Uh, you uh, you have a contingency plan in case a grant source dries up mm -hmm. um, that's one way to respond is to keep a bank of money that's equal to the amount of grants it's not the only way to, to answer that question but mm -hmm. you know this best management practice to have a contingency and when you're looking at one-time revenue mm -hmm. now for some reason if uh, so say they use their money and if something came up, they would just come to the town anyways, and we would have to find a spot, and it would come from our stable, maybe our stabilization or somewhere else. We would have to find somewhere to, yeah. because certain mandates we have. Um, that, that was one of the questions that they that they raised right. was, you know, what if they really get themselves into a jam? Can they come to the town? And I answered yes, but I didn't give I didn't give them the full complexity of what we were talking about. Can you do reserve fund transfers? Can you do line to buy and line net transfers? Can you deficit spend and then make it up to the next town meeting? There's a number of different ways that you can package that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so I mean even if. They, even if they kept their own and used, so if they kept it as is and they just used more of their own money or something, they're going to come to us whether we have a stabilization fund for them or not. It would be an obligation. This, this, yeah, it's an yeah. obligation. So an this obligation. stabilization, all we're doing is we were trying to make it a little bit easier to access mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. And reduce the risk in their budget planning so that they can uh, plan more accurately. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it on this side with respect to certain budgets where there's a lot of risk. We, we're conservative mm -hmm. in our assessment of what that risk may cost us. And we build those budgets and sometimes we find ourselves at the other end of the fiscal year with a lot of money that could have been used for productive purposes elsewhere. To the degree to which we can reduce that risk in planning a budget. And when we're talking about risk, we're not talking about risky people, we're talking about risk in terms of incurring an obligation that you, that you have to honor and you may or may not have the money for. Whenever we can reduce that risk or manage it, we can craft budgets which are tighter and more precise and that you are less likely to generate a surplus um, and the money that you've saved in the budget planning purpose then can go to other productive productive activities. So that's the plan. So what do, do either of you, I mean I know some of the select board are, or some people I've heard are not happy about just just doesn't want to take any money out of our stabilization you know, for something like that. Um, 
Yeah, I have no problem with that. I mean, when we looked at the numbers, it's all above where it's recommended that we be at, in like state guidelines and everything. So, not to pull it for this, but would we pull it out for if we're already above the recommended amount? Hmm. Do you have thoughts either way, Al? I, I just think it's astounding that um, such a massive budget as a school budget has so many big question marks based on what the funding from the state is going to be or based on you know not knowing yet how many people are going to choice in or choice out. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think it's remarkable that we're able to do, that they're able to do it as well as they do, mm -hmm. given the sketchiness of their information. Mm -hmm. understand it that they do so well. Mm -hmm. In other news, it's fit to print. The uh, select board had a hearing session with the American Legion last night to hear their concerns about, uh, oh, yes. about the uh, proposed new senior center. So the American Legion was able to communicate to the select board their concerns about accessibility, adequacy of parking, uh, proximity of parking, uh, condition of their blacktop, or a number of things that they were able to talk about. And the select board suggested that we develop a memorandum of understanding that would be developed by the select board, presented to the, to the executive board of the American Legion, hear their feedback, and then come back work with negotiation, through negotiation, to come up with an agreement that everybody can feel that they can sign. So that will be part of the work that the select board will do on April 4th. Mm. Uh, so it was a productive meeting. Uh, there's some other good ideas presented. Was that taped? It is taped. Okay. It's uh, on YouTube, I believe. Fabulymedia.org. All right. Yep. Go there. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so th that was very encouraging. Okay, good. Yeah, I forgot about that, that, that was happening. Mm -hmm. So was it made clear to preface, of course we want to be good neighbors and work with them and everything, but was it made clear what our actual obligations are or are not when it comes to that lot in the American Legion? This was a listening session. This was not a time when we were, felt comfortable giving them a whole bunch of thou shalt and thou shalt not kind of thing. It was not there. We were not there to lecture, but rather to hear from them because they felt that they were not asked or communicated with. So that was the, that was the first part of it. Okay. Yeah, I think it is good to move forward with a, an open ear mm -hmm. and a willingness to work together. But I would want to avoid any confusion if. If one side thinks that there is a very strict what we can or can't do, and the other side's mistaken, and if we're both operating under mistaken assumptions, that can get pretty messy pretty quickly. So yeah. the sooner we can clarify that kind of stuff, the better, in good spirit. I think I think with the development of the memorandum of understanding that uh, people will get, you know, be able to see where the edges of everybody's perspectives may be, and be able to talk through some of the issues. Hmm. In other news that's fit to print, we are uh, negotiating with the three unions. There's almost zero chance that we're going to have that done by May 3rd. So we're talking about at the fall town meeting, we'll be making whatever adjustments to budgets based upon contractual agreements. We also have to ratify those uh, agreements through town meeting vote. So. We have to do that on the municipal side, on the school side, that doesn't happen. And that's just the way the law is set up. Okay. <laughs> okay, anything else? Anything else, David? Sure. I'm always around. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you know, you're doing a great job. Uh, I'm very pleased that we're talking about functions programs, results, objectives, how budgets support those objectives. This is a, a very refreshing departure from the way that we've done it in the past, which is that line by line rundown through each of the budgets. So this is coming 
together very nicely and, and based upon the good work and leadership that you're doing. I really appreciate it. Now the, um, the few items that were presented to us tonight, are you going to watch us on YouTube or how would we get those numbers to you? Or did they, are they, or were they submitted to you ahead uh, of time? I've, I've received nothing. <laughs> so if you could uh, kindly email that to me. Okay. Uh, I would watch it on YouTube or on Hadley Media, but I've already burnt on my 40 hours this week, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then some, I'm sure. Yeah, I've got tomorrow to get through, too, so. Okay. And, and you took, you take notes for the, um, for, did you, uh, did you want to send it to David, the numbers? Yeah. Along with the stuff they gave us. Mm -hmm. Figure out. Okay, great. All right, good. All right, then I say we uh, call this meeting to adjourn. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Okay, all right. great. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. all. Right.